just my passion for for running mm -hmm. and um, my pride for my culture. What's up, guys? My name is Rob, and this is Rob on the Run podcast, a running podcast for all healthy lifestyles. And today we have Chris, aka I Run for Tacos. Great name, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm um, happy to be here with you, and I appreciate you inviting me, and um, so I can talk a little bit about myself, my journey, awesome. and um, uh, spend some time on the podcast. Awesome, awesome, man. And and let's go straight to the the question I want to ask because of the name. I run for tacos. How how did that come from? Uh, I feel like I've answered this question a bit, <laughs> but it's always so tough to answer. But um, what it comes down to is just my passion for, for running mm -hmm. and, um, my pride for my culture mm -hmm. and just what it is. So I feel like I connected it to like, I had, a, I always had, um, Instagram pages prior to it. Like it used to be marathon Anton cause that was my last name. And I was mm -hmm. I ran a lot of marathons growing up. Okay. Uh, then it was like run H town. So the, the run was there, but yeah. there was that bridge to like who I am. And <laughs> yeah. I felt like, the tacos just like embodied who I am as like a, a Latino and the food I crave. Mm -hmm. So it just made sense. And that being an Instagram name, just there was opportunity there to just make it more of a brand and um, have fun with it in the space and make merch and just put a lot into the, the designs and stuff and really, really back all of those things versus just putting a bunch of stuff out there that I don't believe in. So yeah, it's been a yeah. lot of fun and, I'm really proud of that. As much as I don't give it a lot of credit, it's cool to to see someone appreciating it um, every now and then. Oh, no, I, I love it. I, I love the I run for tacos because I love tacos. I'm the type of person that will go everywhere, um, no matter where, to find the best taco. You know, and and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to Berlin in two weeks for the marathon. And uh, my fiance was making fun of me because we're over here looking for places to go, places to eat, traditional, you know, German food. And she caught me looking for taco places. Like I, I literally put on my on my iPhone taco, and then it gave me all these places, taco places. And I'm like, I I looked at the pictures and stuff like that. So I got a couple places I want to go, but I've always been a you know big time taco uh, person. Um, I'm from Mexico, of course. That's 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 uh, one of the most traditional pride plates that you find everywhere. And and when I saw I run for tacos, I was like, man, that 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 is an awesome name, and. Just thinking about that, like social media wise, like, did you have to wait to until someone gave, gave away that name? Because sometimes, you know, you're when you're looking for a name, it will tell you it's already taken or first shot. You got it. First shot. I got it. And that, that's the full written out like um, sentence. So I feel like whenever I, I decided to make that, mm -hmm. there weren't a lot of pages created around running like I run for donuts or I run for for pizza or something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I feel like it was before all that and before the running craze. I mean, of course there was, <laughs> there's a lot of existing running community then, but I guess when it comes to social media and it's in establishing a social media page outside of your normal, like Chris Anton or John Smith, like uh, it was, it was available. But I, I feel like since then I've had some people reach out trying to um, have me sell them the, the domain or the, yeah. The tag, what, what would you call it? I guess the domain is the best way to, to say in this case. Yeah. Um, username. That's that's perfect. So yeah, yeah sell them the username, but just couldn't part ways with it. I feel like it's like um I've already like soul bonded with the name. And <laughs> it's already it's already a part of me till till I'm in a casket. So I'll, I'll just roll with it. No, it's an awesome name, man. I I I mean part of my my running journey is uh, I love to eat and everybody knows that I can eat. I can eat for like three people at times. And uh, obviously you got to think about doing something healthy to be able to eat as much as you know, you, you want, right. You can't just continue to eat and expect not to gain weight or whatnot. But uh, again, tacos has been one of my favorite place uh, things to eat. And uh, of course it's, 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 it's an awesome name, man. But other than the, I run for tacos, man, tell us about, about Chris himself. How, how did you start running? What, 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 uh, what, what made you decide to, you know, pick up this sport and, and roll with it? For sure, man. Uh, so my name is Chris. It's like the plain intro. Uh, I grew up in Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. um, born and raised in the Southeast, nice. uh, 
And I, uh, I got into running because my older sister uh, ran all the classic runs growing up. Uh, thanks to my father, to kind of got her into running. And then she was just a hell of a runner. I mean, she still can get into it here and there, but she would do all the Terry Fox runs, the shape run, the, the mosquito chase, like <laughs> all the classic um, Houston like runs, the Jingle Bell run. Yeah. Um, and I guess growing up, I was uh, at all these runs in a stroller and I decided to, I guess, pick it up in my um, early years, um, mm-hmm. whenever you're in that stage of finding what you like to do or your parents are finding, hey, what should we get this kid into um yeah. little league basketball like i was i was all right i was decent here or there but what <laughs> i thrived at was um was running like the endurance the just i i just got a kick out of it and i felt like it was something that my sister inspired me to do and obviously it started off with the kids case yeah. and all that i would get the side stitches early <laughs> i would i would puke at the end of the runs mm-hmm. yeah but it was uh it was something that i stuck with and i had the support of my my mom to keep me keep me in it be up at the crack of dawn wake me up with lagañas or <laughs> little eye mocos yeah yeah get me in the car to take me to these runs wherever they were um any part of town and i was always trying to get on that podium mm-hmm. um even as I got bumped to like uh, the 5K and the 10K, I was always just trying to go so I can get some kind of trophy. And yeah. I love like how unique certain races were, whether it was a different badge on the trophy or a different ribbon. Some some races had like stuffed animals or like the, the Texans run had these really cool trophies. I still have some of them in the nice. in the vault. Um, but it was just something I was, I was good at, I feel like. Um, and it's something I enjoyed more than anything. Um, so that's how I got into running. And then eventually I got connected with some um, half marathon, marathon training programs there in Houston. Mm-hmm. And I was still like one of the younger um, people in the group. Okay. Generally, the people that were there were in their, their upper 20s or um, in their 30s, 40s, 50s. And they were training for halves and fulls. And I jumped into it right away because it was like, all right, I like these 5Ks, 10Ks. Like, what's next? And little did I know I had plenty of time to like, trained for these larger races. I don't know why I jumped into it so fast. I even had people tell me at a younger age, like, Hey man, like, why don't you just focus on like five K's? Like, yeah. And you can do marathons in your twenties. Like, Mm -hmm. why are you trying to do it at 11? You know what I mean? (laughs) Oh, wow. Um, Yeah. So I was like, I was like chicken little, man. You see, you would see these grown people and then you look down the line and then you have to (laughs) lower the camera. Then you see me. Um, Oh, wow. I was there training for the races uh, and just to get them done. Cause a lot of kids my age weren't, weren't doing a uh, half marathon, full marathon. So I'd always get the shout outs at, on the, at the school announcements, like congratulations to Chris Anton. He ran a uh, Houston marathon and no one else in the school was running the marathon. So it seemed like an accomplishment, even though yeah. they were saying like, did you, did he win this thing? But obviously I'd get the question like, Hey, did you win? <laughs> that kind of stuff. But it was, it was a big accomplishment to me to get that, to get that shout out and get it done. It just, um, it's something I'm, I'll always be proud of. Cause I, I just felt, felt so good doing that at that age. And I, I can always like look back at that and the way it ties into my, my career now I'm working with ASICs and spending some yeah. time at Saucony and um, where, where it started at Fleet Feet. Mm-hmm. Um, it just all ties to it. I feel like running's just been a part of um, my, my life from start from beginning to where it is now. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it'll ever, ever go away <laughs> with the rate it's going. So yeah. I just really enjoy it. And it's, um, it's nothing that ever feels like work to me or something I have to worry about. It just, um, something I'm always going to have a lot of passion about and give them all. That's um, awesome, man. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. And, and so I take it that at the age of 11, you ran your first marathon. Um, I believe it was 12 or 13 because in that year, I think it was an, an age requirement mm-hmm. to do the half for the full which now I think you, you can be you can be four years old and go run a marathon. I don't wow. think someone's going to prevent you. I'm, I'm, that's exaggerating. I don't know if for sure that's <laughs> the case. But I remember at a time, like, I was like, hey, like, I can't wait till next year where I can, like, be able to run the race because they, yeah. they wouldn't really sign up for anything outside of the 5K at the time. And um, this isn't – we're not talking any, like, Boston qualifying time or anything. This was, like, getting it done, completing. I think my first one I run, ran just short of four hours, which I was like, oh, that's a good time to – Wow. to do it on the first one and i've run some over four hours and i've run some um 
a little bit quicker. So it's just like getting that distance covered after that long, that long training season with all those, all that variety of workouts and all those crazy long runs with your, mm -hmm. your running friends is like, to me, like the, the Super Bowl of it all for every yeah. individual, not, not the people looking at it from the outside. Like, what do you, what do you win out of this? It's all, it's all <laughs> a personal win. And yeah. that's, that's how it is. But it's funny that you say that because it's it's probably one of the biggest questions the non-runners will ask, right? They see yeah. you finishing a race, you got your medal, and the first thing they ask you, "Oh, did you win? Or why why do you run? Why are you running to get a participant uh, medal?" That's that's the one I got. I've gotten a lot. Um, as a matter of fact, this last uh, <laughs> marathon that I just did here in Houston, the the Chevron. Um, we went to go eat and this dude showed up with like a BMW, very, very, you know, well-dressed man, you know, and he, he saw a whole bunch of us with medals and he was like, did y'all win? I was like, no, I probably finished like maybe like, uh, 3000 out of like 20,000 or something like that, you know, which is, is I mean, to me is amazing, you know, oh, and, you know, and the guy just looks at us and he says, so you're telling me that you paid and you got a medal for participating only? And I'm like, I guess if you want to look at it that way. But, you know, I mean, I'm not I am i wasn't there to win. I mean, it'd be great if I could, you know, but I'm there to compete for myself, you know, to, to improve myself, to um, make show people that, you know, you can if I can do it, you can do it kind of thing. You know, and guy kind of looked at me and just went went his way. I was like, that's that's typical. <laughs> no, I mean there's there's just people who don't who don't see the the beauty of it all and mm -hmm. uh they're more close-minded about the process of participating in a, an event like that and ignoring the fact that you that you completed the distance you did and all the stuff that they don't know that you put into making that happen oh but yeah I, I love that you said that you're able to um kind of inspire others um, by them seeing you do it because i feel like there's a lot of people who do stuff on social media in the, in the most positive sense that like, I'm like, oh, like if they're, they're putting a little bit more into it, whether it's a like graphic design, the way they, mm -hmm. they're doing their photo photography or um, putting work in, in the gym or running a little bit more frequently. Like the, the it, it does cause me to like, look at myself and be like, Hey, like I need to put in more work, but um, more than anything, it's it just encouraging. Yeah. I can't say it discourages me, but if anything, it's like, no, like if they're doing it. Yeah. Do it. You just and, gotta and, get out the door for everything. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I started. I remember starting my my um my Instagram for, with the sole purpose of kind of keeping myself accountable at first, you know, because uh having it on the internet and and making my goals public, I guess, makes me feel more accountable about it, right? Even if I fail, if if something doesn't work out, it's still an accountability kind of thing. And then little by little, I started getting more messages from friends, ex coworkers that never, never thought I would be a runner, you know, because of my previous party animal life I had, I guess, you know, and uh, they see me now doing all these crazy things. And uh, some of them I've motivated to, you know, run a 5k, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's the one reason that I, I love my the social media and what I, what I do personally, because if I can convince one person or several people to, you know, pick up something and it doesn't even have to be running, you know, it could be, you know, uh, pickleball or whatever, you know, whatever activity that, 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 that you like, if running is one of them, great, but just to be able to change that lifestyle, you know, because, a little bit about myself. I was a big time smoker. I was I used to spend Friday nights with my friends and party till like the next day, you know, and then Saturday probably do the same thing and not even think about, you know, hey, this is this is this definitely a, a easy way to the grave, you know. And um, one day uh, I, you know, my daughter was born and I couldn't even run from one block to the other, not even from the from here to the door, let's say like 10 feet, you know, and I decided I was going to quit uh, smoking and I was going to, you know, drink more, more cautiously instead of being reckless. And then, of course, I met my fiance, which got me into running. And, you know, it's been it's been an upward spiral. I can't even say it's a downward spiral because it's been such a great thing for me. Now, um, I don't drink as much. I do have a beer here and there just to celebrate something special, you know. Um, but it's it's great, man. It's it, the sport for me has changed 
my perspective of life, my perspective of being healthy, my perspective of everything, you know, so it's, 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 it's a great sport. It's great to hear that, you know, you've obviously have done it yourself in, in a way, you know, and I mean, 13 years old and running a marathon is just amazing. I, I could not think of what, I, what was I, was I doing at 13, you know, but I mean, I started running marathons two years ago, you know, and it, it, I never thought I was going to do it, you know, but Going back to you and 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 running marathons at that age, man. Uh, I'm guessing did you ever do track and field in high school or or um, what's it called? Um, I forget the name of it. It's it's not track and field. It's cross country. There you go. Yeah. Did you ever do cross country? Yeah. So um, in those in those times, like I I did that stuff, but of course it was a little bit it was shorter distance, but mm -hmm. a lot more competitive, right? It's like mm -hmm. focus on that speed and. I, I feel like I was a decent runner when, whenever you look at the competition, Yeah, I wasn't really training to be a great cross country or track and field runner. I was just more focused on getting those miles in <laughs> and not really putting, um, putting the effort towards the, the short, fast stuff. So I never became a great high school or collegiate runner. I was a great high school mentor in my school on the running team because of my experience with the running. Yeah. Um, and my, my school was a little bit more academic focused. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like lead some workouts here and there. And I was one of the, the great runners on the team. Um, but I can't say it was ever like, all right, you're a top high school or college athlete. It was just something that it stayed there, but I never really wasn't running at a high level. Um, but I'm not, I'm not counting anything out. I'm not counting myself out there. I just, I'm saying it how it is, <laughs> but um <laughs> Definitely was always involved in like you, you brought up something um, whenever you're talking about how, how running is special to you and why it was special to you. Mm -hmm. um, doing, um, doing it all at a young age, um, being in those training schedules and having to hold myself accountable, but also having the help of my, my mom to like, be like, Hey, like, I know you want to go out with your friends mm -hmm. this night. And see, it was usually like a Friday night then <laughs> or out and we're just, back super late like 2 33 she's like you know you gotta like go to the time you be texting me she's like you know you gotta wake up tomorrow and run 18 miles right <laughs> and i was like um just not responding or whatever and i get home yeah. one time i got home like like four o'clock oh wow and we had to be at the the park to run with the, our training group like at, at five when i say we my mom was like my ride yeah and uh i went straight from the, the the car to yeah. like get, or getting dropped off i believe or um yeah getting dropped off at the house to like going inside changing walking right back out oh wow um, man so it, it, besides me putting it in the i guess the physical exertion there on those long runs yeah. it was my mom like really staying disciplined trying to keep me with uh, some good influences there with the with the sport yeah and the, uh, the people i had around me in the run community uh, versus just that like um, late night life that I was doing uh, from time to time, but it was a good. <laughs> I will say it was a good balance to where I I, I knew what to prioritize. Yeah, and, um, and it always uh, it always won like the, the running, um, which eventually turned into my job. Yeah, and um, it stays it stays running. And and speaking about your job, you said you were with Asics. Uh, what what got you into Asics? Is that something at the shoe that you used to use even before you worked with them, or how how did that uh, come come along? So um, I actually run Asics was one of my first pair of shoes that I ever like bought at a store. Like um, mm -hmm. you know how when you go to a running store you get fitted for shoes. Like yeah. they they watch you walk, they watch you run away in certain footwear. Yeah. And you're, um, they give you advice on like one shoe versus the other. I yeah. think whenever I first got a pair of shoes at a local run store in Houston, they, they fitted me for a pair of um, ASIC shoes. And then mm -hmm. some of my um, classic pictures of me running, I'm wearing some ASICs. But I think generally when I was very young, I just liked like racing flats, mm -hmm. even for like the long stuff, because I didn't like a lot of bulk underneath my foot. Okay. Of course, things change. <laughs> whenever you, get, you never get a little bit older and yeah, yeah. Your body can withstand some of that impact on the joints or the, mm -hmm. the hips, mm -hmm. a little oh, bit yeah. of everywhere, the back. So that changes, but we're in a realm now that people are running in, in these super trainers that have an extreme amount of foam underfoot, but they're so fun to run in. So yeah, 
uh, it's a fun time right now. And nothing against um, super trainers and carbon plate erasers and really high cushion shoes. Um, but I'm just tr- thinking back at all the very paper, paper thin shoes I wore yeah. whenever I was like from 10 to 20. But uh, then again, I was I was still growing and figuring out what worked for me. Um, but I, I went to a run store, got into a good pair of ASIC shoes um, and, and other shoes, of course. Um, but getting into what I'm doing now, I started working at Fleet Feet. Um, which has been around in Houston since 1987 um, and kind of leading the way there, especially now that they're like the, the main run store left in town with seven stores. It feels like I'm doing like an ad for them. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Great family owned business there. They're a franchise fr- franchise of the, of, the, of the entire company there. Yeah. And um, gave me a chance there um, to learn the business, right. Learn more about footwear. Obviously I ran in the footwear. I knew about, running um but there you become more of an expert on other products you kind of brush up your like retail skills when it comes yeah. to like the cashier part of it um mm-hmm. restocking inventory um keeping things uh, merchandised well especially when you get apparel and all this random scattered size stuff you you get to build on those skills yeah more than more importantly on the, the product that you know and love which is running shoes so yeah. you get to all the, all the brands that they carry and all that and as I um, spent um, some time there, I mean, I, I got to meet a lot of the brand representatives at the time who would come in, hype us up, educate us on footwear mm-hmm. and throw some really good events. Um, and then at the same time, the store put together some good community events where you want to keep building on that. And then social media was kind of blossoming there around content. And, mm-hmm. and that that's kind of what sparked my my interest in like content and and um. I had already kind of had a social media, but this was back whenever you'd post a picture and then you'd click on what filter you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Post. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I was like, Hey man, like we have, we have an Instagram page or I think we actually like started the Instagram page or it was just, or if, if anything, it was just very small. And I was like, Hey, yeah. we have all the product to show off. Like, why aren't we doing it? Then at a certain time they're like, Hey, like go nuts, like do your thing. Yeah. And I just started it from, from scratch as far as like just, try to implement things that were cool and um, then start putting together some events with some of the brand representatives and be a part of the community, go out to the Kung Fu running and bond running club and Mm -hmm. represent fleet feed alongside some of those vendors and um, getting creative with how some of these, uh, these social media assets were. And it it wasn't anything crazy. It was just going to take a picture of the product in a local spot, which has become Kind of, it kind of gotten stagnant now um, yeah. because there's so many cool ways you can highlight product. But at the time I was like, Hey, like, why don't we connect some of this product um, with things people see in the city outside of just inside the store on the shelf yeah. or yeah. on the ground or on the treadmill, whatever we're doing. So I had a lot of fun doing that. And I, I'll always be thankful for those experiences because it um, just helped me see things in so many different ways. So when I'm yeah. making out like promo and stuff now, like, um, it just cool to, to think like how you, how you got to where you're, you're, you're looking at it the way you are now. Um, but doing all that stuff, whether it was the, the social media and then being a part of the community and the events we're doing, mm-hmm. I look, I look back at some of the people I do events with now. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I've been, they used to come to the runs that I used to help put together at Fleet Feet. Uh-huh. And I was the guy leading the run, worried about like, do we have enough food here? <laughs> like, is the rep gonna be here in time? And yeah, they're still they're still running it with me. They're still in the community, so That's it's awesome. cool. Whenever I I look back and see those pictures, and I'm like, man, like there's a lot of people still in it. Um, but ultimately, uh, fast forward. I know I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, <laughs> meeting some of those reps, working alongside them. I mean, they they definitely kept me in mind whenever some of those jobs presented themselves. And at the time Mm -hmm. I wasn't even focused on that. I wanted to do right by the store, um, focus on building them up in the community, um, working with the the teams there. And uh, obviously had some great leadership there at the store, some great manager who's, who remains to be a good mentor to me. That's awesome. Um, um, But doing that for quite a bit, I was like, Hey man, like I, I'd love to like travel, do what these reps are doing. Mm -hmm. Um, represent the brand on social across state lines in certain cases. And yeah, um, got my foot in the door um, back in was it 2019 with Saucony. Mm-hmm. Um, 
got a good feel for the role um, for some years. Yeah. And then uh, most recently, about a year and a half ago, it's early 2023, got a great opportunity with ASICS, um, a brand with a lot of great history and um, has made reputable product um, for years and years. And they gave me a chance um, to kind of come on with that experience at Saucony and um, make a difference with all the great product they've been making and such a tremendous team to work alongside of. And I, I still learn stuff every single day. So all the stuff that I'm saying, like I'm grateful for learning this and that, like you never stop learning. Yeah. And it's, there's always a skill to build when it comes to organize organization and um, pivot tables and um, building out decks and stuff. Like there's always something to learn a new process to get familiar with and comfortable with. Cause you're, you're plenty uncomfortable in those yeah. situations as you're getting with it. But um, been with ASICS for a year and a half now, um, doing this thing, which I kind of described earlier, um, mm -hmm. going around, um, amplifying the brand, educating um, team members on the product, uh, retailers, yeah, and um, hosting big community events out alongside our retail partners. And to me, one of my favorite things, and I can say it proudly, is um, working alongside those those partners, both in the community and the retailers. Like it's it's so fun. Um, sharing that space with them. And, and there's a lot of, a lot of the partnerships I have for the most part, they're so genuine and work. I work with really, really great people and um, it's the best part of my job through and through. And, and speaking about what you do with a six and stuff like that, I did notice um, with uh, Zilker relays just, uh, just passed us a couple, a couple of days ago, literally um, you, you were doing a lot of stuff with a six to like help the, the runners or did you have a team of runners that actually did Zilker or tell us a little, little bit about your role that I noticed that you posted on those social media about that. So um, nothing official has posted on the recaps, but really excited to share that. Um, so, but Zilker Relays, I've been a part of the last two years. Okay. I actually were, was on two freaks team the last two years with, um, nice. uh, with a couple of friends and uh, Patrick, actually I was mm -hmm. on Patrick's team the last two years. So, Really got the good feel for the relay last two years, just being a part of it. And then this year, I felt like I wanted to get more involved, get some of those great community partners that I work with um, in different parts of my territory. Um, so I was able to bring some of my favorite run clubs to Austin. Um, mm -hmm. They joined us on Friday. We had like a team team lunch okay. um, where I presented them with um, a lot of great um brand sponsors uh some team kits um Ooh. treated some some lunch and some pre-relay beers and drinks <laughs> um and they got to connect with all the other groups that we brought in yeah um, and then following that um we had a really great evening at the at the relays um all of everyone coming together really turning in that that game face and like mm -hmm. really getting into the the team spirit there figuring out like hey like we got to be at the start line and we got to go one at a time it's like a whole it's a whole vibe out there Especially yeah. this year, I think they had like 1,800 total runners. Oh, wow. So it was a real cluster in that area. But um, yeah. it was a great time. I mean, I still went out too fast on that first, <laughs> first part. Um, but when you're, when you're out there and you, you take that baton from your teammate, yeah. you're like waiting for it for like yeah. minutes. Yeah. You just like dart out of there and you're going a lot faster than um, you generally are comfortable with. And yeah. then you get to that corner like, all right, let me, let me chill out a little bit. Because <laughs> the ultimate goal is so I can go past that roaring crowd yeah with a little bit of energy yeah and once I pass them i could relax a little bit more and then save some more for the finish but it's all about looking good feeling good <laughs> i wouldn't look good or feel good if i was going too fast so no no yeah and, and I, I guess it's something that it's just normal for zilka relays because i've done it twice and i remember the first time um i same thing like you just said you were waiting and waiting and waiting for a little bit, uh, you know, and then you get that baton and you feel, I felt at least I felt that I had, um, a commitment or a, I, I, I was a felt accountable that I, I had to hit a time. So yeah. I went crazy fast, way faster than what I was supposed to. Um, you know, in my best days, I can run a, a, a 5k, um, in about seven thirty average mm -hmm. pace. I remember you know, first mile, I was like at 630 pace. And I'm like, 
really flew out of and i was dying dude i was when i say i was dying i felt like i had asthma <laughs> you know because i couldn't i couldn't like just replenish all that oxygen and to, to it keep was hot calm, the you know? last couple of years yeah like the yeah years that i'm referring to it was yeah. it was a lot hotter oh yeah yeah um, and so I get it. I get it 100% that you just come out hot, come out strong because the adrenaline's kicking in and whatnot. But it, 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 Zilka Relays is such a cool race, man. It's such an awesome race. I love it. Um, sad to say that I lived in Austin for like four years and I did one only in, as a resident in Austin and then one living here in Houston. But it, it's it's I when I when I found out about the race, I was so discouraged because I would see all these fast runners and and I was in the impression that it was more of an invite only. If you were a fast runner, you probably could do it. Later yeah. on, I finally realized, no, I was wrong. It, anybody can do it, you know, but it's, it's, it's such a great race that brings the, the Austin community and, you know, other people around Austin to come and race and just have fun, man. And, and I'm guessing they still give tacos, right? They, they're still giving uh, taco deli. Yes, Taco Deli is still one of the title sponsors of the race. Awesome. So at the end, I don't, I don't know if you remember your – I'll take that back. I know you remember your Taco Deli tacos if you lived in Austin for four oh, years. Yeah. But yeah. They basically do the um, black beans, white rice, and then they give you um, either the Frontera Fundido sirloin mm -hmm. or the Frontera Fundido chicken, mm -hmm. which is basically the taco with bell peppers and onions mm -hmm. glazed in like a jack cheese um so you can't go wrong with either of those and nope. they're extra melty mm -hmm. uh, so solid and then there's like cheese at the end of the line so you can even you can make nachos and you could even like open those tacos and throw another scoop in there so man you're just making me hungry man <laughs> <laughs> i love i love talking about food man as much as i as as much as i talk about run shoes and like yeah. get into the details yeah i can do the same when i come when it comes to my favorite food especially with um, with tacos, like we talked about the the job and um, how you like to travel and also look for tacos. Like part of what I was most excited about was being able to travel Texas a little bit more and find like mm -hmm. the best tacos in the state. So yeah. everywhere I travel to, I'm like, hey, where are the good tacos at? And <laughs> sometimes it's a bust. Yeah. Sometimes I get some bad wrecks and other times I'm, I'm finding some gems and Baton Rouge, New Orleans. Yeah. Um, El Paso, Corpus. I mean, it's hard to find a bad taco in Texas, but yeah. whenever it's some of these other cities that I'm mentioning, you just have some like culinary geniuses that go out there, make some great businesses, and yeah. they have some some secret formulas, man. Like, <laughs> to make some of what I've tasted. I've tasted some like incredible fish tacos in New Orleans, but that, I guess that's not not too far fetched, right? Because they they got good like seafood cuisine out there, but um just food's always going to be the the motivation and that's why that's why i run for tacos is what oh is. yeah no but but given given that you like uh, tacos just probably just as much as i do uh or more given that you have the name obviously um fa fa where have you found the best taco in texas Ooh, that's tough man dang I can't. That's something I can't answer. You know, I just recently found a place, I, and you're from Houston, so I'm not yeah. sure if you've gone here. Um, um, we went to go check out a couple of buds of ours to do the um, the uh, habanero, and yeah. so because I live on the southeast side of 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 of, 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 of hell, it's not even it's not even Houston. I live in Laporte, so it's not even technically it's not even Houston. Um, so for us to go to that side of town, it's it's hard. So we were on that side of town where I, where they do habanero and and I told my fiance, you know what? Let's go try Tacos Frontera cuz I I've, I've heard so much about them. And I I grew up in California. I lived in San Diego. I actually lived in Tijuana as well when I was a kid. And they're Tijuana style tacos. So I tried those tacos, man. They were they were pretty close to Tijuana style tacos. So if you've never tried them, dude, you definitely whenever you come to Houston, you got to you got to try these Tacos Frontera. They they're amazing. They're, they're wow. great tacos. That's, I'm surprised I hadn't heard of that one, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it now when I go back home. Um, that sounds really good, man. But I will – you said earlier what my favorite taco was, but mm -hmm. I'd be doing a lot of tacos uh, disservice, but not like <laughs> shouting out like 
my favorites without describing them too much. I'll say yeah. um, the crispy fish tacos at Barracuda Taco Stand in Southern Louisiana. Okay. Um, the 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 steak tacos at Tacos Bomberos, who pops up in Houston at Axelrad and and okay. Holland Brewery. Uh, re I really respect that guy, and uh, he he makes some damn good home good filling um, food. Doesn't really taste too much like a like like a taco truck, but it yeah. tastes like someone's making it at home. So that's nice. what I like about it. Um, I also like uh, La Macro for their their Al Pastor tacos. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in Austin, Quantos tacos, usually I, I tell people it's my favorite because okay. they make like border style tacos, um, and a lot of different meat, meat options. Um, nice. they just keep it true. Their salsas are good. Their tortillas are like mixed tamal and always ready to go. Wow. They never taste like hard or stiff or plasticky. Yeah. Um, so do a good job. La Santa Barbacha here in Austin. They do some damn good barbacoa. Um, what else? Um, El Nopalito in, in New Braunfels. Okay. Uh, my girlfriend put me on to that one. <laughs> Bean cheese and bacon there. The tortillas yeah. being super fluffy. The mm -hmm. right big fried beans tasting as as lardy as you want them to be. And, as <laughs> and then having that like yellow cheese and yeah. bacon in there. And the red salsa, like that to me is like one of the best Whenever you think breakfast taco, you have to get a bean cheese and bacon. Mm -hmm. And that to me from places I've tried, mm -hmm. I really love. People from San Antonio are going to hate me saying this, but I still haven't <laughs> found that like San Antonio, like home run taco yet. And I've tried some of the reputable, like notable ones. I do like Naco, uh, Mexican, okay. they make some great tacos out there. They have a, a couple trucks and business and brick and mortars out there. Yeah. They have quite a bit of um, options there. One of my favorites is called the Porcupus. So it's like pork octopus blend they oh, wow. also have um, good chilaquilas there with uh, a good um, barbacoa mixed in there as well Dang. so i've never had chilaquiles with barbacoa that sounds that sounds interesting have you ever tried and mm -hmm. given that you said san antonio have you ever tried the uh, tacos boulevard uh what uh, west Ave? Uh, i think so in, in in san antonio yeah i think it is it's like a green building and they have like the, the window on the side and you can mm -hmm. basically like peek in and be like, Hey, give me 10 of this. <laughs> yeah. the the, the, and I, I know, it. I, I mean, know the, those the are more tacos. like, um, they're more Valley style tacos. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're from, they're, they're actually from, uh, I think I spoke to one of the, the, the owners once when I went, cause I, my grandfather lives in San Antonio. So, uh, when I go, I usually will try them. And they're from like Mission or McAllen, if I'm not mis mistaken, which brings a little bit of, of home to me because I, I lived in, in, in the Valley for quite a while. And Valley tacos are are definitely top, one of my top favorites as well. But um, uh, Taco Boulevard is a real good place that I, I I'm not going to say it's like the best, best tacos I've ever had, but they definitely, definitely hit home. They have a special kind of place in me because the way they make them. But yeah, if, if you haven't tried those, then for sure you got to try those, man. It's too it's too it's too much to say like one's like better than the other. So yeah. I will say we just got to give all these places their flowers for just <laughs> making something because all the tacos I described, all these places, yeah, very different. Um, so yeah, that's the beauty of it. Just like just having the options. But don't you think one thing that I always tell uh, friends that. Um, that like that they like the you know like tacos but i always tell man if you go to a place and the biggest biggest difference between a regular average taco to a excellent taco to something worth your while is a tortilla if the tortilla is not homemade for me it's it's it it just it, it loses some some of the essence of what a good taco would be because nothing wrong with H E B tortillas you know but um it, it, it there's a there's such a difference when you eat a taco from a regular tortilla that comes from a bag to when you're seeing them doing it and then you eat it and it feels like you said fluffy it feels it 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 really makes a taco what it is, man. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can correct me, but that's that's what I oh, think. It starts it starts at the tortilla, man. You're right. It's 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 everything from the outside in that makes a taco great. And oh, we said we can get a little bit more personal here. <laughs> like um, the tacos that I actually grew up on, like everyone mm -hmm. has their like origins, like their grandma making tacos, and I remember my my grandma really making. Um, Chorizo con papa, which is oh, yeah. I feel like the purest 
very first form I ever had of it. And I, mm-hmm. I've always loved that combination. Yeah. Um, and my, my mom would make some great uh, um, tortillas de, de harina or flour mm-hmm. tortillas and just put some little butter in there and give me like a little rolled up one or oh, with man. yes even with this a slice of american cheese you didn't yeah. even have to put oaxaca or any of the, the vanti quesadilla stuff in it yeah, yeah that yeah. was always good and then she'd always make some where she'd fry a, a, a corn tortilla get it all crispy and then we just put i mean it wasn't anything crazy but it was just like hamburger meat with mccormick seasoning and then we'd, we'd use louisiana hot sauce on it so very yeah very home home style to like you're liking what you grew up on but mm-hmm. to me, like telling her i want to play a six or seven of those is like <laughs> like man like I, I can i can literally taste that plate right now just like yeah looking at it every single bite with that louisiana hot sauce and that doesn't sound like a traditional taco but that's that's kind of like one of those core memories and then yeah. obviously now i have a bunch of <laughs> great taco uh um expertise yeah, and, um, I mean, I, I just uh, it's it's all a part of the journey. So I, looking back at it, just like I'm grateful for it all. But it's funny that you say that because the moment that you were talking about the uh, papa con chorizo, it, it 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 brought me back to my mom's uh, tacos. Sometimes, sometimes my mom would always have that already pre-made. You know, always would have something like that pre-made, and then I would tell my mom, "Hey, I'm hungry." Okay, let me make you some tacos, you know, real quick, you know, and like you said, it might it might not be the tacos that you know people would expect, but man, it it hits home, you know, it brings you it brings you back to where maybe like you said, like how you started liking the tacos, you know, it, it all starts somewhere, and man, uh, picadillo con papa, oh man, yeah. damn, you know, all that stuff brings brings memories like crazy, man. I'll never, I'll never be ashamed to like just talk about that. Where some people <laughs> be like, they can discredit it. And be like, hey, you didn't grow up on tree tacos. Like, man, tacos are what, what, what you grew up on. Yeah, and um, it's just something I'll always cherish, man. Especially like um, that home cooking. Yeah, and um, just thinking about my mom and my grandma and um, all those memories is uh, something that can't be replaced. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, As a matter of fact, my mom's getting here in two days and I'm already thinking, you know what? That papa con huevo or, or picadillo con papa or chorizo con papa. I think that's that's gonna be on on the on the list. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go H B and buy all that stuff so she can make them because there's something, you know, I can try to re- remake the tacos the way my mom makes them. And and as much as I wanna I try, they just don't come out the same. They're good, don't get me wrong, but it, it just needs that special touch, man, that your, you know, your mom, your grandma, like you said, they have it and uh, nobody can replace that, that same style, you know, for sure, man, for sure. But yeah, man, I, I mean, it's awesome, dude. I, I love, I love uh, veering off, even though, you know, it's not a running thing, but it's, it, 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 it definitely it still links up to, you know, what it is that running it is, man. But uh, going back to ASICs, just, just quick question. Favorite shoe, favorite uh, training shoe per se. So I'm getting I'm getting some more mileage in than I have before. Like mm-hmm. thanks to Silker and a couple other things, i will probably be targeting like Houston half marathon or Austin half marathon or even mm-hmm. El Paso because I'll be at all three. Okay. Um, but my favorite shoes to run in right now, and I will say they're I feel like top ten, top mm-hmm. ten well received um shoes out there on, on the internet and with um with people and run clubs and. And a lot of people are still like untapped with the shoe. Yeah. Um, the Nova Blast Four, great everyday trainer um, for easy days. It's it's soft, has a good spring to it. The cushioning doesn't feel like too soft and squishy. It provides a lot more return, more spring, which I feel like a lot of us need. And yeah. I need it to feel more consistent on my run and not feel like I'm like breaking down. Like obviously, a shoe with a lot of foam, you're gonna get cushioned, um, yeah. but that shoe just gives you a little bit more. Oomph and excitement nice. so a lot more energy right there and then um one of my favorites as well is the super blast um super blast 2 just came out they um they, they usually get some raving reviews so really excited to see that shoe continue to grow get onto more feet to do more demos and stuff yeah. with that shoe it's um it's hard to, to get a negative comment about that shoe especially alongside some of its competitors it's like top tier and yeah. usually gets um, like shoe of the year um, comments um, 
as people get to try it whenever they're looking at other shoes that come out in the year. So those two shoes are kind of what I usually rotate. Yeah. Um, and then if I want to feel fast, like when, <laughs> whenever there's those days, like we yeah. make the meta speed and the magic speed, those are going to be carbon plated. Okay. Um, those are dialed in shoes. And um, that's whenever I want to pick up the pace a little bit when I want the shoe to do more of the work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. If I'm picking two shoes, I'll say Nova Blast and Super Blast. And and one of those is that your marathon shoe as well, or you have a specific marathon shoe that you haven't mentioned? Um, I'll say like um, marathon, I'd, I'd probably do in that in that magic speed. Okay. Because I like um, I like how snappy it is, but it mm -hmm. also has a more excuse me um, sturdy build. Okay. Um, so it has that steady platform. It has the carbon plate. It's a little snappier. Um, it's not as elite as the the meta speed, but it's uh, I feel like it's a better every person type of carbon plated shoe. And it's the one that we're we just um, outfitted our our Zilker relay teams in, and we got some good feedback there. People utilizing it on the the two point four mile loop, yeah. and are also getting some training runs in it right afterwards throughout this this early week. Yeah. Um, so that's a good one too. Um, but while we're on that, I know I'm getting, going back on something. I wanted to talk about the, yes, yeah. more about the groups I brought in. Yes. Yeah. So that we brought in some groups. So we brought in eight teams. Um, two of them were from Houston. Okay. So we, we brought in the good guys run club from Houston. Mm -hmm. They we brought two clubs, two of their teams. And, um, one of them was from a, a brand that I work a lot, like a lot alongside of, of their called Anaka. They're a Houston-based brand yeah. out of Missouri City. They okay. make uh, um, gym wear, sports style clothes, um, very um, in style um, graphic tees, and the fit and the, the feel of the, the apparel is really nice. Um, doesn't feel like cheap or uh, economic. It, they really focus on those materials, making sure you you feel like you got the best quality stuff on. Um, and a really cool brand, cool people behind it. So because they've been doing a lot more running stuff, they also invited. A team out there of some of their athletes really good guys as well mm -hmm. um and then um, a couple of clubs in san antonio countdown track club and uh, coffee run club that okay. i've worked with a lot the last couple of years even dating back to my um my time with Saucony. Mm -hmm. and um one of these group um these groups i met in el paso on my re recent trip out there i've known who they were who they are for the over a year now and yeah. then we did a, an event in april and then we've just been staying connected and really, really working together. They've done a, an event with me in Austin, uh, like a pop-up, which was great. And we we celebrated at one of the uh, reggaeton clubs in Austin afterwards. And they had like 20 to 30 people come from El Paso to their event. And then we had another like 70 plus join us for oh, that wow. event. So really cool thing that they, they helped put together there. And um, they came out for the relay as well, a team of four. And the okay. craziest thing about their their story was they were so busy throughout the week. And they're like, hey, we're still going to make it for the relay. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave Thursday night. They leave Thursday night from El Paso. That's an eight-hour trip. Yeah. They get to Austin at eight in the morning. They're like, hey, we just got here. We're going to get a little a little nap in <laughs> before lunch. Yeah. They show up clean, ready to go, fresh for lunch, looking good. Yeah. Uh, and then ready to go for the relay. Uh -huh. they, they had a great time at the relay. And they're like, hey, man, I think we're going to head back. <laughs> right after because they have wow. a saturday morning event in el paso at 9 a.m so oh they wow made it, but they made it they're there at that event they do events every weekend and they always put on a show out there and i saw them standing in front of their group with their zilker relay shirts <laughs> and just just uh they uh they never cease to surprise me there with that group um they represent the sport well they represent community well and they do some authentic stuff out there with their the, their audience and their um their community so really really happy to work with them and everyone else i mentioned yeah uh, but seeing them all come together and i told them and i was you'll still see it on a social media caption is like one of my proudest moments as a as a brand representative and just uh, as a runner in the community just to be a part of that um have this have this role and be able to be a part of this relationship is is huge and it's just a lot of fun um and bringing them all together to be connected is another is another great thing to see too i've already started seeing a lot of them like working together and just um 
building each other up from one community to the next and like giving each other kudos for what they're doing, taking pointers from one another. That's a lot of things I saw at lunch was them like being like, Hey, like talking about like platforms they use for like promoting their runs and yeah. um, collaborating. And I feel like that's, um, that to me was the biggest win from the, from Zocarilla is seeing that more than the shoes they had on their feet or me being there was yeah. being able to bring them together. So well, that's amazing, man. That's that's amazing. That's so cool, man. Um, I definitely want to. Uh, maybe you'll text me the name of the group, and maybe we can uh figure out a way we can have them in the podcast as well. Because that's that's the stuff I love, man. Um, you know, driving eight hours only to be there for what less than twenty four hours, and then get nice. get your butt back over there to uh El Paso. Which man, that drive to El Paso is one. I don't know about you, but it's not the most pleasant one. It's so it's so long, and it's I can only imagine being running so hard for a relay, and then just changing that and going back home. You know, so that's dedication, and that's that that that's what I like to hear. You know, that that they do it for the community, and 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 obviously they made a huge impact for you. I can tell. No, I I always have great things to say about them, and. Um... Everyone I, I work with, I, I can say something great about. Um, but um, just the, the way they they came that morning to yeah. El Paso, the four of them and um, together, and then just went back. But also were bright, bright and early at their at their nine a.m. event with all the energy that they brought to Austin is yeah is uh, something I can always speak highly of. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome, dude. And 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 one thing that caught my attention, you mentioned you're from Houston, but now you live in Austin. Was that because of the of the job or just personal um, that you wanted to move to Austin or what what happened there? It's definitely it was all um, job related. So with these these representative jobs, unless a company has like two plus representatives covering the state because everyone mm -hmm. covers the, a territory with these roles. Yeah. Um, if they're at the time it was there was one rep so it was like hey you can either choose austin or, or dallas and mm -hmm. austin was like the city to be in i had already some friends who worked in the space so i wanted to be in um, where they were so that's kind of what brought me to austin and then same thing with a6 just um that role was posted there as well so it just made sense and austin just continues to to grow in that space. so being like a central hub for like promotion promoting brands and yeah. running the running events in Austin generally, it's moving to San Antonio next year. But for the most part, it's been like that—a town that's great for running. People see Austin as a great, like, community city with mm -hmm. all the groups that are out here. It's a great town to run with the uh, town lake being right there in the middle, Love being it, able yeah. to access that ten-mile loop uh, yeah. without necessarily touching the road. Yeah, um, it's like if, if Memorial Park like stretched the whole city. <laughs> you can still you can still do that if you yeah if you hit Allen Parkway. You can. Yeah, take um, trails through downtown, but um, Town Lake is definitely more like connected. Yeah, um, great, great cities nonetheless. Like every city that I cover has a great running community, um, but I, I do like that I'm central and I can still access San Antonio and a skip, hop, and a jump. Houston, I'm mm -hmm. like programmed at that two and a half hour drive already. Yeah, like it's, it's nothing really. So even when I'm at an event and people are like, Hey, you're headed home after this. And they're like, that's, it's kind of late. I'm just like, no, it's, it's just like a, a drive I do in my, in my sleep. <laughs> it's just, uh, not necessarily, I don't, I don't drive while I'm asleep. Just, no, just, I hope, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> but um, it does. It's just very routine to me and um, it's, it's home. So it never feels like a lot when I'm looking forward to, to being in, in, in town for, yeah. to, to see family or to work with some of the, the retailers and community out here in Houston out there in Houston or whenever I'm headed back to Austin to sleep in my bed, it's, um, uh, it's encouraging there as well. Awesome. Awesome. And, and favorite distance, man, which one is your favorite dist go to distance? If you had to pick, I have a feeling it's probably the marathon, but what would it be? It's not the marathon anymore. So it used to be because <laughs> I was just like obsessed with wanting to complete it and get the kudos. I was like, yeah. get the medal, wear it to school, get all the kudos. Like, like I told you. Yeah. Um, but in today's day, 2024, I'm 32 now. I'll say my my favorite distance is the half. It okay. still has that prestige of being a distant, a, a great distance. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot more feasible when it comes to training and just being mm -hmm. able to a little bit more of a distance that I can get up and do, even if I'm struggling. 
Yeah. Uh, and it feels like I'm getting a lot accomplished um, regardless of where it is. Um, so I'll say 13.1. You know, it, I, I, as much as I have um, enjoyed the full marathon, I agree with you 1000%. It's something that if I have to do tomorrow, I can easily do it. Even even if I'm struggling, I know I can still manage to squeeze in the 13 miles. Um, and it's 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 still a long distance. It's still a very decent distance. But at the same time, I feel like um, I can do it and be able to do more activities during the day. Uh, I feel like for me, at least, I don't know about you, when you've done a marathon, I feel like I just got hit by a dump truck after after a marathon. So uh, usually my days it ends with a marathon and there's not not much I do afterwards, but a, a half marathon, I can run it. I can, you know, go go to a, another event, go to a concert, go to a movie, go have dinner with friends or something like that. Still be able to be uh, fully active and fully mobile. But uh, for me, the half is also my favorite. And what, uh, given that the half is your favorite, which one would you would say if you don't have one favorite? But which one it would be the one that you would like to do all the time if you could? The distance I would like to, that I'd like to do more frequently, like uh, the, the event. In other words, like the Houston half or the Austin oh, okay. half. Wh which one? Which one is your top uh, race that if you could do a, a, every every year you would? It's a toss up now between I haven't done Houston half in so long. Mm -hmm. I need to go back at it. But being there around that, I feel like that's that's my hometown. Like my like hometown, home community. I can have more family come out to that. That's going to be the number one, but I feel like more recently with Austin, yeah, giving it a shot year after year and getting better at that at back, back three miles, which is uphill. Yes. Um, is going to like a personal challenge for me. So I feel like I'm like in any way, like getting to the point where I like, I just got to be better next year. Just going to continue to get better at that, at that final three mile incline. Um, and I feel like each, uh, each year I've handled it better and better. Like whether it's me, like putting my head down, leaning forward, yeah. lifting my knees up, letting them swing a little different yeah. um, on the, on the uphills and then coasting on the downhills. I feel like it's gotten me over there without having to stop. Whereas yeah. if I'm looking up that hill and I'm seeing someone on the corner of my eye, putting their head down and stopping, then my brain's going to tell, Hey, it's all good. You can just shut it yeah. down. And yeah. then that's, it's going to be a, a train wreck all the way back to the capital <laughs> from there. Um, and, and and speaking about that uh, uphills, have you ever done Zilker? Uh, not Zilker. I'm sorry, uh, Decker Challenge. I haven't done the Decker Challenge. I've I know that um, Rogue Running um, kind of put that on and mm -hmm. done it over the years, but I haven't done a lot of the elevation climbs here in Austin. Occasionally, I'll go like it's been a while to Hill yeah. of Life and get that kind of elevation mm -hmm. but i haven't done like mountain bonnell or um enchanted rock or anything like that so i definitely need to get out there and explore austin a little bit more outside of like that town town lake loop yeah and, um and the general like barton springs area zilker park area so there's there's some there's some room to be a little bit more adventurous there for me let, let me give you another place that's very very nice and dear to me because i was more i was more when i lived in austin i was more north like north what west i guess i would say um cedar park there's a, a very nice uh trail there as well um and i used to do most of my long runs there if not you know zilker um um town lake as well but decker challenge bro if you ever want to challenge yourself for some nice rolling hills that one is is amazing uh i always tell people that ask me about decker challenge that one literally took my soul that one really? Oh my God. And, and it's, it's, it's a challenge, but it's a great challenge. And I know they've done it at the uh, Coda a couple of years. Um, but the one they do it in right there in Decker where the, um, where they do the rodeo and stuff like that, it's, it's rolling Hills nonstop. And then they got this huge, huge uphill that uh, faces, uh, is right next to one thirty, And it's, 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 it sucks when you're doing it, but when you get that medal and you finish, you feel like, man, this is this is awesome. So if you ever get a chance, man, do that one, and and then let me know. Let me know what you think. <laughs>
No, I, I need to. I need to get um, – I will get more involved with some of those things that I just mentioned, like go out and run some more of those trail loops and mm-hmm. trap pumps, trail shoes. I'm, re- I'm ready for it, man. Um, having this conversation has gotten me very excited to get out there and explore more of the city and just yeah. – um, build back on all these um, great running um, stories that I have shared with you today. So appreciate yeah. that. Um, yeah. You, and trails are awesome. They're in Austin. That. Trails are awesome over there in Austin. I just, I just love the difference um, in the terrain. You can find something very technical or you can find something very easy, but there's always something in Austin that you can run as far as trails. So yeah, trails is something I encourage you to, to try, but um, definitely, uh, Chris, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know it's been a, a little bit longer than, than expected. Um, we do have a question from our, um, from our, uh, previous guests, our episode 13 guests. So we'll give them a little bit of time to, you know, ask the question and then you'll have some time to ask. Okay. Or not ask, uh, answer. Sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what is one of the greatest life lessons that you've learned through running? All right. So one of the greatest life lessons I've learned through running, um, such a loaded question, <laughs> but um, I mean, it might sound cliche whenever mm-hmm. I say this, but it's one of those things that you have to, as it as easy as it may seem putting one foot in front of the other, mm-hmm. like it's something that you have to, have to, have to keep at, keep putting efforts, frequent it more, um, and hold yourself accountable to it if you want it to to get any better. If you want to, yeah. if you want, if you want to be any better at it, if you want to get any better at it, you have to put more into it. It's like yeah. the more you put into it, the more output you're going to get. Of course. Um, in life, it's the same way with anything. Whether it's you trying to better your finances or putting effort into a relationship, mm-hmm. um, it's one of those things that you um, that you learn a lot from. Yeah. And it's um it's definitely the the one thing I've been most committed to in my life. So if I can learn, I have learned um, <laughs> from that in my current life with some of those other things. So um, that's one of the biggest takeaways I can take from running. And I'm forever grateful for the sport. Like you talked about how great it's been for you and your yeah. journey. Um, I owe a lot to it um, with everything that we've talked about today. Look at you. You're, 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 who, who, how, how many people can really say that they make a living off of something that they love to do? You know, um, not saying that not everybody does it, you know, but, you know, to just to, you know, you love running, you love what running has brought to you. Now you're doing it in a way, educating people about, you know, the shoe or the sport or uh, the proper shoe to wear and stuff like that. So how many people can say that they can, you know, wake up every single day and say, man, I'm, I'm making a difference. I'm, I'm doing, I love what I do, you know, and you can truly advocate for something that you believe in. Like you said, you've been wearing ASICs for a long time, you know, that, that, that says a lot and says a lot that the brand believes in you too, man. So that's awesome, dude. That's, that's really, really cool that, that, you know, you, 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 you're, you're still striving for your goals and that's awesome. But um, again, I don't want to take too much of your time. So we're at the segment where it's just like how you answered the question from our previous guest. Do you have a question for our, what would be our episode 15 guest? Yes. Uh, my mind just went slightly blank there, <laughs> but I talked, um, I talked earlier about how, um, how one of my proudest moments in this space was um, kind of seeing a lot of these community partners that I work with come together mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. So I'll pass on some of that with this question. Um, what is um, your proudest moment in the space of running? Um, and with me, it's it's attached to like my current career. Mm-hmm. But to them, it could be a personal goal with running or mm-hmm. um something they've seen someone else accomplish. Maybe it's them being a mentor, Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a lot in that question. And um, once again, like what is your proudest moment in, in your journey with running? Awesome. 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 And I have to ask this question because you did bring this up earlier. Um, If you had to carb load pizza or tacos. (sighs) 
That one's tough. And you can't say pizza, uh, pizza taco because I know there's a hybrid pizza taco now. It's either one or the other. Which one would it be? <laughs> um, damn. Um, I hardest, have taco. hardest question all that I, I had just given you. This is the hardest one, man. <laughs> I have a taco tattooed on me. And okay. tacos, tacos are one with me. Okay. But if I'm carb loading and I'm looking for the sort my preferred source of carbs for carb loading purposes, I'm gonna go with the pizza and the pasta and the way I've done it um mm -hmm. more traditionally growing up. So yeah. I'm going to stay true to myself and go that route. <laughs> no, don't, don't, question. don't feel bad, man. Don't feel bad because my, my carb loading uh, meal, especially like for a marathon is pizza. It's yeah. pizza because the way I see it is it, there's, it's very hard to get sick off of pizza. You know, uh, especially if you're like running a marathon the next day, uh, the last thing you want to do is get sick, you know, with your stomach or something like that. So pizza has always been my go-to. Mm -hmm. And so, and this is coming from a guy that, you know, also loves tacos. And if I can, if that's, if, if that was the only meal I could eat for the rest of my life, I probably would be okay with tacos, you know? So mm -hmm. no worries. You're, you're good. You're good. Your, your tattoo is not going to get mad. You know, <laughs> uh, it, it just makes sense, man. It makes sense. But, um, Chris, um, basically we're done here. The only thing I would like for you to do is, um, What's your next race? What what what's the next? What's the, in in the plans for for Mister? I run for tacos over here. Um, just like we mentioned, man. Uh, there's there's some races coming up. Um, there's a, a a whole bunch of them, but I'm unsure which ones they're gonna be. Um, exactly, but I yeah. can say for sure, I'll definitely be running the Austin Half Marathon in okay. February here in town. Mm -hmm. Um, and with those really cool ties to El Paso, me being out there for that marathon, there's definitely a good chance that you'll see me doing the the half marathon out there as well with okay. that with that family out there. So um, those are the ones I'm going to be shoot for. There's an if, an asterisk on Houston. Okay. Um, because I do like going out to some of these races, taking pictures yeah, and uh, cheering my, uh, my friends on. So that's also something I've enjoyed doing. Um, so I'll put the asterisk on Houston. But for well, sure, if you decide um, to do um, um, uh, Aramco, if you do decide, um, hopefully we can meet up and and hang out and whatnot. Um, but you know, as 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 runners that we are, I think we feel each other by uh, the saying, "If you do it, I'll do it. If you do Decker, I'll I'll go and join you and do Decker with you." I can't, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> so I'll let That's you think important. about that one. It's the ball's on your court. Um, just let me know. Um, I've done it, so I know how how bad it could be. The good thing is it's in December, so it's nice and cold. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I'm excited to see you uh, run uh, Austin Half. That's a great, great race as well. Um, and just keep on improving, right? That's 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 all we can do. Absolutely, man. One foot in front of the other. That's right. That's right, man. And last thing here, how can we obviously already know, but how can we find you in your social media? Is it all the same or let us know how we mm -hmm. can find you? So for the most for the most part, I stay the most active on Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I at I run for tacos. Um, you'll find a combination of what's going on with my personal life, the the outfits, the travel, the work stuff, my my prouder moments with work that I want to share on there. I will. I'm no no, sh or I'm not shy to like put that out there because I feel like very proud of those moments and yeah. the things that I do. Um, and then everything else that I that I do, kind of like the. 100% of it all goes to on my work page at uh, Texas Tech Reps. So kind of like Texas Tech, like the, the college, mm -hmm. but reps because my role is called a tech rep. Yeah. Um, so Texas Tech Reps and me and the the Dallas area rep, we we share a page there and we we share highlights from the Texas area, Oklahoma and Louisiana. And um, that's where you'll see all the ASICs vibes that we we post up there. And any of the the reposts and stuff that we get from from tags um in the stories so a lot of asics and chris anton activity if you follow that tech reps account okay and um and i run for tacos sweet sweet man well again chris thank you very much for your time i definitely feel like i took way too much uh, of what i expected but it, it great yeah. conversation man great conversation uh, I hope to get to meet you soon. Again, if you decide 
to do uh, the Ramco half. I am going to do the full. Um, I'm trying to do the legacy, trying to do the 10, 10, uh, 10 runs. So hopefully my legs could withstand 10 times doing this race. But uh, hopefully we'll get to meet each other one day. Um, you know, I, I do go a lot to Austin because I'm a Austin FC a season ticket holder. Sorry, Dynamo people. Um, I'm an Austin FC fan. So maybe one day we'll we'll catch up and maybe watch a game or something. Hey, either that or like, um, we're definitely gonna meet meet up. But yeah, me and my girlfriend we wanted to go to FC game, so maybe I can take the the tickets off your hands for a game and um. Oh yeah, from you. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure, for sure. And um, again, thank you very much, man. I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll we'll see you on the next time, man. Uh, good luck on your races, for sure. All right, thanks for having me, man. It's an honor. Appreciate you um you sharing um, a little bit of I run for tacos and my running journey on your podcast. Appreciate of you. Of course, man. Of course. Have a good one.